Um, so his name did pop up in previous uh, evidence as Jesse Brown. Um, some of you may have heard this name as well. He was actually uh, once previously introduced as the CEO of Himalaya Exchange and he said he resigned in January of 2023. Mm -hmm. Before that, he was doing a lot of crypto work and it was revealed that he was like self-taught, which is a fair statement, self-taught uh, crypto architect almost. Like he for, uh, oversaw a lot of projects relating to crypto companies. Did he have a non-prosecution agreement with the government? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. Yes, he you has a non-prosecution agreement. Um, uh, you know, for for the things he did, um, potentially for Guo Media, mm -hmm. GTV, um, for something he did in the past, and I think it was two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Uh, yeah. For mortgage application, because he misrepresented uh, his income, mm -hmm. and this is the for the mainly the 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 three things that he will not get prosecuted if he tells the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Sure. What was the main argument they were really trying to make through this witness uh, from the government side? Yeah, for sure. So because he held like the, the uh, CEO position, mm -hmm. later transitioning to president of the Himalaya Exchange, mm -hmm. actually, um, they were trying to delegitimize like uh, Himalaya Exchange as a trading uh, exchange, crypto mm -hmm. exchange, um, through his understanding of what is conventional and what is not. Uh, at the one, at one point, you know, there's a seizure of the fund. That's the fund that's in the which is in the reserve of mm -hmm. the Himalaya Exchange. Mm -hmm. The reserve is the 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 reserve basically the pool of money that's backed up. Mm -hmm. uh, for the the Himalaya dollar by one dollar uh, one Himalaya dollars for one US dollar, um, so so you you see the docs that the document that's been shown again the Himalaya uh, dollar credit on Himalaya ecosystem platforms is equal to around four hundred and one million dollars, um, and uh, but he has no knowledge on how much money the Himalaya Exchange Reserve has mm -hmm. or you know except for for the, what's been shown in the documents um, after this the seizure of the fund um, the, the the customers or the the people who owns uh, the coins or owns the dollars they cannot exchange or redeem on the platform um, right um, and the and then he, he mentioned about the effect on the price of the coin. He said, oh, he had a lot of fear that uh, there's gonna be a big run, big run, which means a lot of people is gonna sell the coin at once, so mm -hmm. the price would drop very very low. But then in term what in terms of what happened is uh, it only very little drop. Mm -hmm. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was low volume, and but the price was still maintained of the coin. Mm -hmm. So he said that, oh, perhaps it was like bots upholding the, the value of the coin. Mm -hmm. But you know, with anyone with a bit of investing knowledge knows that if the volume's low and the price is stable, that usually means that a lot of people are in it for the long-term investment, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And the cross exam was pretty pretty interesting to watch, to be honest, because at first we, we established that um, his role was not code or IT based. Right, mm -hmm. that's first and foremost. He was more so like an architect, uh, sorry, an architect, like focusing on the uh, procedures of how like the crypto should be built mm -hmm. to his understanding, mm -hmm. right? And um, basically that, uh, because it was, he actually mentioned previously in his testimony that, oh, he felt like despite being the CEO, he had no, uh, sorry, no, no one to um, report doesn't to him. Input. Yeah, he doesn't give you. input. But like he was mostly responsible for like the way that it was, uh, the the project progressed mm -hmm. and what in what ways the project should have progressed, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, to go back on to uh, you know the on chain off chain <laughs> transactions, he at first said that you can't have transactions occur off a of blockchain, which is a very interesting statement to hear from someone as experienced from crypto as he is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So our lawyer uh, Scott had to circle back mm -hmm. a long, long way, giving many, many examples mm -hmm. of how, let's say, a transaction could occur off right. uh, mm -hmm. off of block the blockchain. He's like he was he's giving yeah. like a lecture to it, this witness about <laughs> how this cryptocurrency works. Right. And there's there's a possibility of a different you know exchange to mm -hmm. happen, right? On just this one concept they probably spent about twenty minutes. Oh that's uh, quite a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> until until we loop back and he said, Okay, it's possible <laughs> that, you know, transactions could occur that's uh, not visible to the public mm -hmm. eye. Mm -hmm. He was he was asking if the you know the reasons uh, you know the reasons for user 
user to want to have off-chain um, a transaction mm -hmm. and he said oh I don't think there's reason for them to do so <laughs> right but yeah. then but then uh, once again our lawyer Scott Shirk she he gave a lot of examples saying oh for example to settle quicker and it's uh, less expensive right when you avoid do avoid some fees yeah when the fees on um, when you do an off-chain transaction and then later on he agreed oh I guess mm -hmm. yeah I agree yeah this is True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the m most important part of the cross examination was just before we left. Mm -hmm. It was to basically give the uh, the jurors some nuance, as in this yes. wasn't the final form of the Himalaya exchange. Mm -hmm. You know, as outlined by the white papers, as outlined by the phases that they had stated mm -hmm. in their mission statement, mm -hmm. that this this. Um, uh, private ledger trading of the Himalaya exchange was always meant to be temporary mm -hmm. as they build up their their uh, phases mm -hmm. they want to be able to trade on um, on chain mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. the the HDO and the HCN right. they want to be able to service other cryptocurrencies as well mm -hmm. right and they were all working towards this. they want to be able to service like mm -hmm. the ecosystem with mm -hmm. HPay and whatnot mm -hmm. so it all credits like Himalaya exchange as a legitimate uh, system yes. a legitimate ecosystem, ecosystem. It was yeah. a, it was the so-called they called it ambitious plan, but it was the plan. That yeah. was the ultimate plan. That we we know it's know. ambitious, and that, that's why we're here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, the NFSC in general has the most ambitious plan, which Absolutely. is to sure. take down the CCP. <laughs> yes. And Absolutely. I think you know to look at a lot of these G series, um, what um the ecosystem that mm -hmm. we, that you know we they're, they're trying mm -hmm. to create mm -hmm. is is the is the fact that this is still a very early stage. Absolutely. You know we can't really look at it from that standpoint yet mm -hmm. because, like you guys said, there has been so much effort and so mm -hmm. much thought put into creating these systems yeah. that you know we we just have to give it more time to let it really develop and grow yes. mm -hmm. into what it's what it's intended to be right.